Remember, as the Galilean has said, If I be lifted up, I shall draw all mankind unto me. All mankind, not one, not many, but all mankind. When some of you pass through the gate which leads to the heart of the great bright light of the universal soul's cosmos, we said to you, Feed the sheep of the pasture. Hold the young lambs in your, to your bosom. Within your soul's consciousness, in silence and sacred reverence, your yea was yea, and unto the mortal your nay was nay, and so it remains, and so it ever shall be. Let this not appear as strangeness, this that you are about to do, for in the divine plane there is no strangeness. That which man calls strangeness is but separating the, the wheat from the shaft in consciousness. The shaft is not wasted. Be mindful of the seed, for the ripe wheat, as it falls through the mesh, is saved to plant in the fields of the living God, that it may spring forth. Remember, each tiny kernel of wheat brings forth a number of kernels, and each life devoted to the service of God brings forth many souls into the light of truth. Know God as principle, then ye, too, may be fishers of men. For you are the kernels of wheat in the great field of Christ's endeavor. You are the tiny acorns, and remember the acorn becomes the oak, and on its branches nestle birds that build their nest and raise their young, and beneath its branches the weary wayfarer rests and finds comfort. comfort. Each one has his own individual life to live, individual in the heart of God. You will be mindful we have always endeavored to separate the mixture of personality and the individuality of man. Individuality is God in action. The personality takes on the reflection of environment of the physical. Let us go back to the sieve, the wheat, and the shaft. The shaft is never lost. Orthodox theology speaks of salvation. Let us define the word properly. It is to salvage, it is to establish in truth that which could have been lost through error of interpretation. The pasture of life is filled with sheep, many of which have strayed from the shepherd. We are evading the word must and supplanting it with the word shall. The sheep shall be found. All men are snatched as brands from the burning fire because mortal man becomes confused. We lead, and when those who are leading behold the light but dimly, we stand still until we behold the light becoming illumined in the consciousness of those who are desirous of leading. As we have said to you, when we behold your light, we reach forth and say, Come, you are ready for the next step of, for, of revealings. We, the shepherds of the Father's house, called to you, and through you other sheep have heard the voice of the shepherd. Many prodigal sons have heard through some of you, and they are returning to the Father's house. Strange paths, strange roads, strange avenues, only seemingly so, but the strangeness was but confusion in mortal thinking. Now, dear hearts, you are no longer limited to the confines of mortal confusion. Have faith and confidence in our leading, for we are not leading you for this moment for this day, but for that which you have called the tomorrows, tomorrow. You, as you pass through the gate upon the path leading to the heart center of the great cosmos, you too will become shepherds in the pasture of God. Truth speaks. One word of truth does greater work, carries greater weight. It is as the tiny kernel of wheat. It multiplies. One word of truth grows, and it becomes the salvation of man. The fire of life tempers the still. The still must be tempered to serve its purpose. May we help you. You are standing before life's forge, placing your still, and we of the council shall not see the still ill-shaped, nor shall we stand by and see you burn yourself while you are being purified by placing your still in the forge of life. That would not spell reason, would it? We are not servants, as the word is commonly understood. You are co-workers, young shepherds in the field. In the words of the sage of ancient age of the, of the Far East, I have traveled life's path many times, and I have yet to find an honest man losing his way on a straight path. Ponder the statement. You are honest, 
ponder it, you cannot lose your way. Remember, should there be any loose spokes in the wheel, the blacksmith of life shall fasten them securely to the hub, and they shall never become loose again. The word Lord, or law, of God continues, and ever shall continue to be the shepherd of men. When man of earth understands in his heart's consciousness that God is love, God is truth, God is power, there can be no dismay, no fear, no doubt, no lack of courage. The psalmist has well said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why is there no lack or fear of evil? The psalmist spoke the word, For thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. The rod of truth and the staff of understanding have always given and will continue to give comfort. The law, or Lord, established truth and established love of God in man's consciousness. Man's consciousness is but a reflection of man's thinking. As man desires to think God-wise, so man desires to live God-wise. The Christ light, radiant in the consciousness of man, makes all dark ways light and all crooked paths straight. When, in consciousness, a soul reflects on these truths and will not permit pollution of the clear stream of his life, nor will he accept thoughts of discrepancy or failure, that soul is accepted into the Nehemiah plane of the White Brotherhood, for he has become a constructive worker in the light. Just as the shining soul of Nehemiah of old, who hung the gates to the city, the newly entered soul shall claim his birthright in God's love, light, and wisdom. It shall walk in the light with the assurance of God and rebuild in consciousness the walls of his own city of Jerusalem, man's Jerusalem, the holy city, within man's consciousness. As mankind rises in consciousness, because of its desire to know more of the living God, so each one shall in turn become a Nehemiah. The gate shall once again become a protection against the onrush of doubters, those who in thought would destroy your Nehemiah consciousness, the builders, the faithful workers of the eternal principle. When in prayer or meditation it becomes your desire to seek aid or inspiration from we of the council, from our particular sphere of spiritual teachers, or to reach any member on an other planes of the heavenly, host relative to some activity or expression in life, it is then there will be a sincere seeking on the part of the dedicated collaborators who wish honestly to share with others that which is still unwritten, unprinted, undiscovered, unbuilt, or unpainted. All that is ever necessary is but to visualize us in consciousness, to send out the call, reach up, reach up within and send forth your beam of light within. By using the light which you send forth in prayer or meditation and ascending in consciousness, you will find us there to aid you and inspire you. Remember the law of the magnet. The magnet attracts to itself all that is acceptable to the magnet. And you, dear ones, are going forth in quest of truth, not for yourselves alone, but to share it. Therefore, you are the magnet. Always see things with a divine aspect, even though at times this seems contrary to mortal conception. That is to be expected. Being is becoming. Becoming is knowing. And knowing is the fullness of wisdom. Dear hearts, always remember you do not walk alone. And in whatever manner we speak of your true spiritual ability, we have no fear of your ever using this ability selfishly or possessively. We are happy to inform you that you are now penetrating the veil of doubt. All that which has obscured your vision from the fullness of God's knowing is disappearing, as the mist is dissolved by the warmth of the sun's rays. The mist has returned to the oneness of life. We shall never see you wander on barren waste that cannot be. Closer than hands and feet we remain with you. There can be no barriers, for you do not stand alone. With each pulsation of the blood, as it follows through your physical body, so in consciousness you will become aware of the vastness in the great pattern of life.